and in business, the Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency has announced a new pump price band of 121 Naira 50 Cobble to 123 Naira 50 Cobble per litre for premium motor spirit, also known as petrol. The PPPRA, which is an agency of the federal government, disclosed this in a circular to fuel marketers dated May 31st, 2020. Now the sharp drop in crude oil prices on the back of the spread of coronavirus saw the landing cost of petrol hitting a record low in March, wiping off subsidy on the product. The, pri the pump price of petrol, which is still being regulated by the federal government, was reduced to 125 naira per litre from 145 naira per litre on March 18th, 2020, effective March 19th. Now, following the Monetary Policy Committee meeting held in Abuja, the Central Bank of Nigeria on Thursday slashed the monetary policy rate to 12.5% to spur lending to the economy, which faces imminent recession on twin pressures of COVID-19 pandemic and low oil prices. But the CBN retained the cash reserves ratio at 27.5% and also left the liquidity ratio at 30%. Gordon Emefiele, CBN governor, said during a virtual briefing. I am now joined by Dr. Josh Bamfo. He is a partner at Anderson Tax. Thank you so much, Dr. Josh, for joining me on the news. Thank you for having me, Irene. Certainly. Now let's talk about the MPC meeting that held last week. After the MPC meeting held in Abuja, the MPC agreed to reduce NPR to 12.5%. Help the common man understand what trickling down effect this would have on them and basically what this entails. All right, so the MPC, by meeting last Thursday, had to do a diagnosis of the economy and recognize where the imminent challenges are. So clearly we have two major issues. First is the economic um, downturn because of you know, the containment measures to um, curb the spread of COVID-19. And two, the fact that although interest rates are not too high, they've been increasing slightly over time. So March, we had the interest rate year on year to be around 12.6, and April, it rose to 12.34. So they were caught in a dilemma. Do we continue to curb interest rate rise, or do we deal with, you know, the potential recession of the economy? Now, the change in the monetary policy rate will indicate or signal to individuals and businesses as to you know, the central bank's assessment of the economy. Now, should they have increased the NPR, that would have meant that they felt that in, um, inflation was the bigger problem. Because if average prices are going up, that means cost of living goes up and it makes people worse off. However, if they had um, retained it at 13.5, that would have meant that they didn't see the recession has been imminent, all right? Now, by reducing it from 13.5 to 12.5, what they are telling the public is that they see recession as a very big problem. So now they are reducing the NPR, which is the interest rate at which commercial banks borrow from the central bank, so that commercial banks can make more affordable loans to both individuals in the household sector and businesses so that individuals can demand more of goods and services and businesses can also make more investment, which increases aggregate demand and therefore give business an incentive to produce more and therefore hire more people in order to get a potential recession. So clearly, by reducing the NPR, what is um, its implication for you and I is the fact that hopefully other interest rates in the market, such as the prime rate, you know, other household rates and mortgage rates, will hopefully also come down and therefore make the cost of borrowing cheaper and give us a, another source of incentive for us to be able to borrow and survive these very trying times in the future. But do you really think this is attractive enough to you know, attract these businesses? Because at the end of the day, all of these measures, measures like you rightly said, are channeled towards ensuring that there's an ease of doing business, basically. Yeah, so you, we cannot take it in isolation, right? If we take it in isolation, then the impact might look minimal. But we need to take it in, um, in addition to all the other palliatives that the Central Bank of Nigeria has actually implemented earlier on, as well as the um, central government, which is the executive arm, has implemented in terms of fiscal policy palliatives. So since we are talking about CBN, let's look at some of the palliatives. Already, CBN has you know, reduce the interest rate on concessional loans that they've made to the public from 9% to 5%. They've also increased the moratorium um, um, period by one year. 
They've also sent, um, you know, made uh, facilities available to individuals and small and medium-sized enterprises of around 50 billion um, naira, you know, to help curb, you know, these um, challenges during this particular period. They've made one trillion um, available to agro-allied and manufacturing sectors, and 100 billion naira available to the health sector. So, if you then take this MPR being reduced from 13.5 percent to 12.5 percent, in addition to all these palliatives then hopefully, you know, it's going to have a much bigger impact on the economy. Now, if you look at the communique from, you know, the MPC, clearly they are optimistic that even though Q2 um, results might be a case of a, um, a reduction or a contraction in the economy, and Q3 could also be, you know, a contraction, they believe by, by Q4 the economy would have gone back to positive growth rate because of these palliatives and this monetary policy rate going down from 13.5% to 12.5%. Now, Dr. Josh, good thing you mentioned some of the palliatives. I, I, you mentioned agriculture as one of them. Now, in terms of these palliatives by the CBN, there are concerns by business owners, some business owners who are not listed as essential services, who would have to reopen as the lockdown eases, but without support. What can be done as a form of support to this set? So clearly, there are a number of palliatives that individuals and businesses can actually enjoy from. Now, the challenge is, you know, uh, first and foremost, having the knowledge about, you know, the modalities of those palliatives so that they can actually take advantage of it. You know, one of the things we learned from this MPC um, public was, uh, communique was the fact that out of the 50 billion naira facility made available to small and medium-sized SMEs as well as individuals, Oh, less than 10% has been taken advantage of. So they had about 4.1 billion that has been disbursed to about 5,800 beneficiaries. So we still have about 90% that is still available and out there for small businesses and individuals to take advantage of. If you look at what they did for the health sector, out of the 100 billion now that has been you know, made available to the health sector, only 10.5 billion has been disbursed. You know, and we don't have information on the manufacturing and agro-allied um, sectors yet. But clearly, we have these um, palliatives available, but we've not been able to take full advantage of um, these palliatives yet. So what is going to be very important is first and foremost, there should be more education from CBN in terms of you know, an awareness to potential beneficiaries. And those potential beneficiaries should also try and learn more about what is going on so that they can take advantage of these palliatives because it's really going to help them you know, survive this particular period and get out of this um, period stronger than before. Dr. Josh Bamfo, partner at Anderson Tax, it's always a pleasure having you on our news. Thank you for having me. Certainly.